All right, so this is the product analytics PM UX sync for March 22nd, 2023. Um, reviewing sticky items. I don't see anything up in sticky today. Uh, Kevin, looks like you have the first agenda item. Yeah, so I kind of wanted to focus a bit more on this milestones uh, priorities. Um, I kind of rank uh, some of the issues myself that I wanted to go over with you, but the first one I put was the juristic evaluation. Uh, so like the smaller version of the UX scorecard. Um, I basically did last week uh, the whole mapping out uh, of the flows. Um, I have like most of it done. Uh, so now I'm kind of going through the process of uh, using our heuristics uh, to evaluate them. Uh, I'll basically share this. Uh, once this is done, this should not take me a lot of time to do, yeah. um, especially that it's a trimmed down version since we don't have the job to be done. Um, so I just put this on my priority number one because it's also a great way for me to get acquainted with uh, the setup. Um, so yeah, do you have any thoughts on that before we move on to the next one? That's good. All right, cool. Um, then the other one is about adding a visual indicator to the dashboard panels when they're in edit modes. Um, yeah, it seems like basically when you're in a dashboard, you have a normal state and an edit state. In the edit state, you can tweak your dashboard to kind of reorganize the layout. And you can also add uh, data sources, as far as I understand, um, at least for the dashboard that you own. Um, but yeah, so the, the um, visual indicator is mainly focused on the layout structure part. Um, I don't expect this issue to be like a big uh, chunk of work. The only thing that when I started doing the, the uh, evaluation, the heuristic evaluation that I kind of noticed is just the edit pattern is a bit weird in a way that it kind of combines, like I said, both the appearance of the dashboard as well as the content. And I'm not sure if we really want to proceed this way. Um, so it's either we just tackle this issue as a, okay, let's, let's do the small fix now. And then later on, we kind of refine a bit the workflows once we get like more research. Um, so that would be like one approach, one way to, to tackle it. Either we just kind of make it bigger than what it is and start thinking about what the edit experience should be. Um, but that is probably a chunkier amount of work for sure. Yeah. I would take the slim down amount of work on that on so that we get actual data from customers, um, which through the alpha and the beta, I my ask of customers is going to be like 30 minutes every other week with us on a think cool. call talking about the issues that they run into. I think that'll be a great point for us to validate things that we think are UX debt and acknowledge mm -hmm. just they are and then pay them down or say, actually, no users are fine with this experience. And we're just going to close that yeah. out, make sure it's aligned with the rest of the kind of platform experience and, and move on. Um, so I wouldn't run down a solution validation path on that. I'd say get it to a point where we're happy-ish with it so mm -hmm. we can move on to the next thing that adds value. Okay. All right. So I'll just sum this up as let's keep it small for now. Yeah, let's keep it small. Cool. Um, and then, yeah, then I got like P3, P4. Um, so P3 would be the issue about where to put the instrumentation details. Oh, after yeah. the dashboard listing. So it seems like this, yeah, this part of the UI disappear depending on which dashboard listing you're on. Uh, to be honest, I still need to kind of go a bit into the weeds of the different listing because I don't fully understand it right now. Uh, so that's going to be probably like most of the complexity of this issue is just me understanding this because then other than this is just figuring out where to place something in, in the layout for now. Yeah. Um, so this is just to, I'm going to restate it and make sure I understand the issue. Um, today, if you don't have any dashboards, you first need to point at a data source. That's what instrumentation yep. details gives you. 
Once you've done yeah. that, though, you lose what you're pointed at because we replaced that with a different that button with a different call to action, or just remove the button altogether. Yeah, which is um, yeah. So what I've seen so far, if I'm not mistaken, is you once you you have the instrumentation details at the beginning, then once this is set up, the buttons change for a new dashboard, something. That's right. And then, and then visualization designer, and then this instrumentation detail disappear. So I believe, like the way I'm understanding this issue so far is that we want to keep it no matter the state of the dashboard, and we kind of need to figure out what to do with this. That's how I would sum it up. Yeah. If the, so, I'm sharing my screen real fast. <laughs> yeah. Going from. Um, this is what you see with instrumentation detail if you don't have a data yep. source. And then once you do, um, it becomes this visualization designer. So you can start to build yep. data for your dashboard off of your data source. Um, yeah, I would either make this a drop down of change data source or view data source, edit data source, something like that, at which point we might need a different screen to show that or do the same thing here. Uh, let me see my data source or change my data source. Yep. Um, the experience yeah. after that, I think, could get more complicated because you might, like, I can see, um, I want to look at data right now for this pre production environment. And now I want to look at data for this production environment. And then there could be a use case later down the road of I want to compare the data between the two environments. Like, there's just going to be some limitations there. So I would go, let's solve for the you, you can change your data source, but it completely changes your data source. We can't compare. Um, I, I don't mm -hmm. know what that does then to the state of the dashboards. Um, I mean, this use case is blown up as I talk through it. <laughs> what do you think? Um, yeah, I mean, and there's, yeah, I, I still need like to understand um, the purpose of the instrumentation details beyond the initial setup. Like, I still need to grasp this because it's not fully clear to me right now. Like, I understand why we have it in first hand, but why would we want to have it later? It's most likely to tell me, okay, where would that live? Um, and then, and yeah, just as you're showing, just to call out that I know Tim is also working on uh, my request to introduce a new flow on creating a custom dashboard. And I think this will add another CTA to this part which is like new dashboard, this is going to be a primary. Then we'll, we would end up with three TTAs in this REI if we were to retain it there. There's something to kind of think about, but it's, yeah, yeah. this is the why that needs to be a bit fleshed out, I think, for me to be able to proceed with it. I think the why um, there is I messed up or I've changed my stack and I need to point it at a different data source. That's what instrumentation okay. details gets you, right? Let me write this down so I don't forget. Cool. Um, yeah, and then I guess that's about it for now as I'll pick up the issue and then dive in. I'll probably have a ton of questions. Um, is there anything else we wanted to discuss on this one? On this one, no. Um, I mean, let's try to keep it small again uh, for the alpha. Uh, we're not guaranteeing mm -hmm. that we're not going to blow away data as you go through things. And I think that that extends into dashboard. The nice thing is that if you've created custom dashboards, they're in your Git history as YAML. So you could go copy paste out of an old commit and recreate it really, really fast if you change your data source. Um, if we have to go down the path of changing data source that meets the existing visualization, um, or just acknowledge that they could be broken. Like if you've built a visualization yeah. on data that doesn't exist yet, it could be totally broken. Okay. All right. Um, cool. So moving on to the other one, which again, like I've barely read it, but from what I understand, there's a bit more of a flow structure issue. Um, but yeah, basically it's just to show how we are listing new data 
dashboard or adding new dashboards. Um, I'm not sure about that, actually. That's also why I wanted to discuss it. Because the, um, the issue has um, design to it. So I don't know if you've understood it as well. Um, it seems like we have to pick between one of the options or do we have to build one? <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, okay. Looks like Rob created the issue. I would ask him, Okay. what is the intent of this? Figure out the UX issues of the preferred design choice and engineering implementation. So it looks like the, the outcome here is pick one of these for the empty state. Yeah. Of you don't have it, the, the empty state being you have a project, you haven't set up a data source yet. The first step to get to seeing data is going to be looking at one of these screens and then clicking the configure button or the mm. add data source button. Um, what's interesting is the Like the, what I would want to get an answer from from Rob is why, like that last one, the analytics data sources shows product analytics and insights, and then the standard page and the empty, the standard page one shows value stream and CICD when you're on dashboards, hmm. but not product analytics. Yeah. Just trying to understand like what what will a user actually see here? Like what data can they configure? and go get to, or what um, dashboards can they go build based on this empty state? If you haven't if you haven't set a data source, product analytics, what will they see? And then how, the treatment of it, we can we can tweak and align on, um, but which I like, was actually showing up there today. If I if I had an empty data source for this, this new visual. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, this on zone. I'm going to just add a note to um, I'm going to reread the issue and then I'll add a note for Rob just asking. Cool. Um, or if he watches the recording, he can let us know of kind of more what the intent of the issue is. That's 391 yeah. 495. Cool. Got it. And yeah, with that, that was the last one. Uh, that's the way I ordered it. The thing I wanted to check out with you is do you feel it is accurate or would you reorder them to prioritize another issue? Um, I would. I would focus on the work within the first external user epic first. So P3 mm -hmm. and P4, um, the visual indicator I would do after that. And then he, the heuristic evaluation, just to make sure that we're continuing to move towards getting that weekly active user number beyond zero. And yeah. we're gonna gain a ton of insight from users as soon as we actually have users, but we have to get this work done before we can get to that state. Got it. You'll probably get sick of me saying that. Oh, what did we do to increase our weekly active user count this week? <laughs> it's kind of fun to go from a product area with lots and lots of users where we don't think about that to how do we go get that first user? How do we get more users right now? It for sure is a different thing. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And then uh, looking ahead to next milestone, uh, you're going to have yeah. the capacity. I'm going to be up for yeah. part of that as well. Let's uh, okay. preemptively cancel the call on, or make it an async call, I guess, on the 19th, since both of us will be out. We'll let the team know. Yeah. Um, but we'll both be out that day. And then I'll be available or do async on the 26th with anyone who's around. OK. Just add this in the action items. Cool, thanks. Um, what's what's I think? Yeah. Yeah. So, go. Cool. Um, and then the other one was um, yeah. I mean, it's just following up some of the discussion we had around building a job to be done for the stage. Um. I don't know what you're feeling on that, but I would feel that we should do it sooner rather than later. I'm um, comfy with building a job to be done. I don't want to go down the whole research path with it yet. Mm -hmm. 
um, just okay. to keep that focus on getting those first users. Um, because I think we're going to, just in the feedback we get, we're going to validate a lot of assumptions around the job to be done and understand what they're actually trying to do and where there's value. Mm. If we build a job to be done around a solution without understanding the problem these customers actually have, we're going to be in a bad state and we won't have users because there's probably not enough of them. No, if for sure. We... I think, yeah. I mean, on the problem part, that was my idea on actually focusing on the job to be done is to kind of framing like the problem first. Yeah. And that would kind of put us away from the solution that we have right now for a bit. Yeah. If we want to focus on what's the problem someone's trying to solve when they set up analytics. And I think that we focus on that persona of developer who doesn't have access to it today. Like they're starting from zero data. What is the mm -hmm. problem they're trying to solve? What's the job to be done there? Got it. So do you feel that we would get to this doing, um, I mean, retrieving feedback from the people that we open the solution to? Yeah, I think we'll validate that we've got the right problem <laughs> um, okay. with those folks. If we find that the problem they're trying to solve is different than what we imagined, then we can we can pivot. Um, and maybe we find that they're not trying to solve this problem at all, and they just don't yeah. need data. Like there's there's that realistic probability, possibility, not probability. I don't think that's going to be true. And we're going to find lots of folks who are like, yeah, I'm not data informed at all about my product. I want to get data, but the job that they're hiring us to do could be, I don't know what data to go get. So I want you to really do that for me, not give me a framework that I know the data, I know the event, and I just need to visualize it. Maybe they already have that. Um, it could be a different problem they're trying to solve. And so we can start with an assumption of they have no data and they need something to collect data and visualize data. That's what they're going to hire us for. Great. Mm -hmm. um, and, and and go from there. Okay. Does that seem and... reasonable or is that way off of where you thought you, we were going or where you wanted to go? No, no not necessarily way off because I, I was not sure about you know the calls and everything that we had planned around the release. Um, I need to think about it because I'm also like, how are these goals structured? Do you know it yet? The the goals for release, like timelines? Sorry, like, no, the, the calls that you're going to have with people that got... Oh, the calls. Sorry, I, I misheard. Sorry, misheard. the calls. My bad. Yeah. Um, I haven't thought through it yet. Uh, I'm going to okay. start working on some onboarding stuff uh, yet this week and next week. So that we have, hey, yeah. you're you're joining the product analytics alpha. Here's kind of an intro email. Here's the expectations. Here's maybe we even do an office hours thing uh, of you can sign up for office hours with Kevin and James and Dennis, um, and mm -hmm. we just have regularly scheduled find that somebody can book themselves into um, and, and approach it that way. But the, okay. the structure I think is mostly going to be follow up from their last call of. You know, what did you run into and have we fixed it? Because we should be releasing product fairly often. Um, new insights that you've gained from the product and things you wish that you could solve with the product. Those are kind of the big things I want to hit. Okay. Yeah, I just I just want to be careful that we don't frame this as a solution validation versus like problem validation, right? Because yeah. since we already have the solution, I think we should be careful of not falling into this kind of trap of trying to validate what we have, knowing that it was not informed by a job to be done or by any research that, like problem validation in the first place. Yeah. I mean, um, I think- That's, that's my research, only worries for now. Research was done, interviews were done, an opportunity canvas, I think, was done. Have you had a mm -hmm. chance to go back and watch those old interviews that Kenny and team did? Yeah, yeah, I've seen, I've seen the playlist. Uh, I just came through it. Um, oh, yeah, I think you shared it with me. That's where I found it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um yeah okay let's yeah let's just see how we can kind of structure these goals to to frame this um okay i'll check in be with careful um, not falling into solution by addition. yeah i'll check in with Haim as well and see how he's approaching the calls that they're doing for the open beta on mm -hmm. uh the um, value stream because i think he's having some calls with customers or meeting with customers pretty regularly about that I'll take that as an action okay. item. Cool.
Uh, we have about four minutes left. Yeah. Last thing um, I wanted to touch on uh, is the funnel visualization. And I'm going to check in with Dennis on this, um, on our one-on-one -on -one tomorrow, or I should just ping him async or in the channel. Um, I've seen this listed as part of our alpha. It's not in the alpha epic, though. It's in the post GA mm -hmm. epic. So I wanted to get to get better understanding on that, especially since we've started to do work on the funnel um, funnel analysis and just see where we're at today, what the plan is for that, and just get alignment on. Is this part of the alpha or is it not? If it is, um, then we'll probably need uh, some design on this sooner than later, <laughs> obviously. Um, so I wanted to make sure that it had your attention as a, hey, here is a piece of data visualization that we're probably going to need sooner than later, because I don't think we have anything in pajamas for this. No. Um, though, I mean, if, we, if we're talking strictly from a visualization perspective and chart perspective, I think we're pulling from a library that has it. Okay. So we could use that. Um, cool. Yeah. But then again, what's what we kind of need to define, like what's the flow and how you can build this visualization with what we have right now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I'll check in with Dennis on that. I'm just gonna do that in channel as soon as we're off the call. All right. Anything else? Do we get wrapped nope. up? I think we're all good. Good call. All right. Excellent. Have well, a great rest of your day. Yeah, you too. See you around. Cheers. Bye.